Um, the question, uh, uh, the, uh, the topic for uh, today, you can see it on the screen. The oil question in Uganda, implications of parliamentary resolutions and governance and development of the petroleum sector. Uh, I want to believe that um, the majority of you have been or have seen or have read uh, these resolutions. Um, they have been in the place for a while. And you very well understand that there has been a debate on the implications that actually these resolutions may have on the sector. And we thought it was very, very important uh, to have a discussion. This topic actually was chosen by you. The majority of you, we had, I think, uh, about three topics which were circulated and uh, uh, you picked out this. And I think because of its importance, and therefore, uh, we are ready to go uh, this morning. Um, on the panel, we have um, the Ministry uh, of Energy and Mineral Development. Uh, we have the Minister. Don't ask me um, because the Minister is supposed to be a lady and he may be a single man. Uh, we have uh, Commissioner Ernest Rubondo, who is here in the capacity of the minister and therefore representing the minister. But Ernest has come uh, with a team uh, from the same sector. And we have uh, the acting uh, principal geologist, uh, Dodith Abinomudsha, uh, uh, who is uh, on our extreme right. Uh, Gloria uh, Sebikari, who is the communications officer. And I think it's important that actually you take note uh, of these uh, names and these people because if uh, you need to get information, then you need to interact with the communications officer, and I think it's important. And of course, uh, Alex Nyombi, who is uh, a geophysicist. <laughs> okay. There is a lot of science uh, 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 in this uh, industry. And then uh, on the side of the uh, discussions, we have uh, Honorable uh, Moses Dombo. Emmanuel. Sorry, Emmanuel Dombo. You are familiar with uh, Emmanuel is because he's been uh, in Parliament um, for some time now. And uh, he's been on top of many of these policy issues, and I think you are familiar with him. We do expect uh, Honorable uh, Sechkubo, uh, I think who is not yet here, and of course uh, 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 our colleague, Mr. Izama, I think who is also great, who is here now. And I would request you actually uh, to come forward and take your appropriate seat so that we are able uh, uh, to begin. So without taking much uh, of our time, I would straight away invite the Honorable Minister uh, to start us off by giving his presentation, which uh, our respondents here will be discussing. And uh, he's not going to do the projection. And I would therefore ask you to listen attentively uh, so that we are able to give appropriate response uh, uh, to his presentation. Um, Honorable Minister, you are most welcome. He's here in that capacity, and therefore, uh, he's a minister, at least for today. <laughs> uh, I don't know the, 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 kind, the, time that, uh, the time frame that you want uh, uh, to be given, but um, uh, we normally give uh, 15 minutes. If you think that is uh, fine, uh, you uh, run within the 15 minutes, but um, I can use the discretion to add you some five minutes if you feel it is necessary. Um, Honorable, you're most welcome.
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I, I would like to start by bringing the apologies of the Honorable Minister, Honorable Irene Moloney, who uh, are called invited to make this presentation this morning. Uh, she has not been able to be here due to earlier planned engagements and she has requested me to come and make her presentation to this audience. It's therefore a privilege for me to be a participant and make a presentation on behalf of my minister to this 25th session of the State of the Nation platform which is organized by Accord. I was just sharing with the organizers earlier on that uh, I am surprised that this is the 25th session when I have not really heard about the State of the Nation platform. It probably shows how, how, how not adequately I'm mixing. But I congratulate you for this process. I will read the Honorable Minister's uh, presentation, verbatim, and the, I and my team will therefore participate in the discussions that continue thereafter. Uh, so if I could start with a presentation. Uh, it says, uh, Mr. Chairman, participants at this workshop, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Ministry of Energy and Mineral Development, I would like to thank you for inviting us, myself especially and my ministry, to make a presentation at this meeting and also exchange ideas on the topic, the oil question in Uganda, implications of the parliamentary resolutions on governance and development of the petroleum sector. As participants are aware, uh, Parliament passed resolutions concerning the oil and gas sector in a special session uh, which was held in October this year. And uh, some, as you are aware, some of these resolutions are currently being implemented. Before I go into the impact of these resolutions, I wish to spend a few minutes to talk about where the petroleum sector has come from, where it is, and relate these to the implications of the parliamentary resolutions. I will also highlight how government is addressing the issues identified in the sector through implementation of the National Oil and Gas Policy for Uganda. Participants will recall the deliberate efforts government has undertaken to promote the petroleum potential of this country. These efforts have included training of manpower, acquisition of scientific data in the areas with the potential for petroleum production in the country, and using the acquired data to promote and attracting investment into the sector. This effort of promotion has been successful as international oil companies were attracted into the country, significant investments have been made and most importantly, commercial reserves of petroleum have been discovered in the country. Following the discovery of petroleum, which was at the Mputa One Well in the Kaisotonya area during January 2006, the business risk of exploring for petroleum in Uganda was reduced considerably. And the Alberton Graben, which is the area with the potential for petroleum production in the country, changed from a being a frontier area to an area with the potential to become a petroleum province. A frontier area in the oil language is an area where you really don't know whether anything may be found. It's just at the edge at the beginning. So the Alberton Graben of Uganda changed from being a frontier area to the potential of becoming a petroleum province. At that point, government put a halt to licensing for petroleum exploration in the country with a view to introducing a new regulatory framework which would take into consideration this reduced business risk and other aspects relevant to the desirable development of the sector. Uh, government commenced the process of putting in place a new regulatory framework by formulating a national oil and gas policy for the country through a consultative process. This process evolved from 2006 to 2008 when the policy was approved. The companies which had been licensed in the country before the halting of licensing included Heritage Oil and Gas Limited, Hardman 
Resources Limited, which is now Talo Uganda Operations Limited, Energy Africa, which is also now Talo Uganda Limited, and Neptune Petroleum. Negotiations with Dominion were ongoing when the first discovery was made and had progressed very far. So these were con continued and concluded in 2007. The licensed companies continued implementing exploration work programs as agreed in the production sharing agreements. And these continued exploration in the licensed areas have since led to the undertaking of 20 seismic surveys in the country and the drilling of 63 wells in the Albert and Graben to date. These efforts have also led to the establishment of 20 oil and gas discoveries in the country. The resources in these 20 discoveries are now estimated at over 2.5 billion barrels of oil, and the investments made in the sector to date, or in the subsector of petroleum exploration, are over 1 billion United States dollars. The National Oil and Gas Policy is now the key policy document under which development of the oil and gas sector is being taken forward. And the sector is regulated under the Petroleum Exploration and Production Act, together with the Petroleum Exploration and Production Conduct of Exploration Operations Regulations of 1993. This policy identifies the key issues in the sector. It proposes objectives, strategies, and actions to address these issues. And I would just like to spend some time outlining here below some of these policy objectives and how they are currently being implemented. Because one of the concerns in this country is that policies are made and they are put on the shelf to gather dust. I will not list the objectives one by one and then say how they are being implemented. I will just read an objective and briefly say how it is being implemented in the little time that the chairman has given me. The first objective of the policy is efficiency in licensing areas with a potential for oil and gas. As indicated above, there is currently a halt in licensing of new acreage in the country. This is mainly to allow for competitive licensing rounds, which will be guided by the updated petroleum resource law that will replace the current Petroleum Act. Uh, it's important to note that some of the acreage which was previously licensed out to companies, the, the ones that I mentioned, is also now being returned to Uganda, to the country, through relinquishment requirements, which are in the agreements, and also expiry of licenses. So since this halt was put in place, about an additional 10,000 square kilometers has been re released from license areas as a result of relinquishment and expiry of licenses. The second objective is to establish and efficiently manage the oil and gas resource potential of the country. There has been an increase in the country's resource base that has been established from 300 million barrels of oil equivalent when the policy was approved in February 2008 to over 2.5 billion at present. An efficient resource management framework is also being put in place through the creation of sound institutional framework which will separate policy setting, which will be in a directorate in the ministry responsible for oil and gas, business promotion and regulation, uh, which will be handled by a petroleum authority, and the commercial aspects of the business, which will be handled by a national oil company. Objective three is to efficiently produce the country's oil and gas resources. Most of you are aware that there has not been any commercial production of petroleum in the country yet. However, government has received and is reviewing applications for production licenses together with field development plans for some of the discoveries that have been made. Appraisal drilling and extended well testing are part of the ongoing appraisal programs for some of the oil and gas discoveries which have been made in the country. These appraisal programs will provide improved understanding of the volumes of oil and the appropriate methods of recovery of discovered reservoirs with a view to facilitate their efficient production when production licenses are issued. This is a very important point because like I've had occasion to share with members some time, the amount of oil you get in a res out of a reservoir varies around the world between 10%, sometimes as low as 5 
and 60%. So you can imagine having an oil reserve there and you only manage to get 10% out and the other 90% remains there. That happens in some parts of the world. In the places where they're doing well, they have gone as high as 60%. So you never get all the oil out of the ground and the effort to try and get as much as possible out of it is a deliberate uh, and it's a lot of hard work and it's something you have to insist on. So these appraisal programs are in an effort to ensure that when you start production, you get as much as possible out of your reservoir. Uh, the average is normally about 30%. That's why you sometimes hear us saying that out of the 2.5 billion that has been discovered in Uganda, uh, with the current technology, we expect to get 800 million to 1 billion barrels out. But if we do well, like some countries have done, we could go higher than this. So the effort of reviewing these applications for production licenses is really in an effort to ensure that when you give somebody a production license, they will be producing uh, as much as possible out of the field. The fourth objective is to promote valuable utilization of the country's oil and gas resources. The policy provides that all efforts are made to avoid wastage. The kind of gas flaring you've heard and read about in Nigeria. And it also provides for refining the discovered resources in the country so as to provide petroleum products for Uganda and the region before the export options are considered. In this regard, a feasibility study for refining in Uganda was concluded in September 2010, and this has been approved by government. This study defines key aspects of developing a refinery in Uganda, like size, configuration, location, financing, and markets for the products, and planning for the development of this refinery in this country is now being taken forward through aspects like acquiring land, uh, hiring uh, technical advisors to help package this, and looking for partners with whom government will participate in this development. Objective five is to promote the development of suitable transport storage and transport, suitable transport and storage solutions. In this regard, a petroleum transportation and storage study for the country has commenced. This study has two parts. It covers both the transportation and storage of crude oil and gas from the oil fields to the refinery, and it also covers the transportation and storage of petroleum products from the refinery to the markets. The first part of this study is ongoing and is expected to be concluded before the end of this year. And the second part of this study will commence next year. Objective six is the collection of right revenues and they are used to create lasting value to society. Uh, the existing revenue management policy is currently being reviewed with a view to putting in place appropriate legal framework for petroleum revenue management. 